right. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. Unless acted upon by an outer force. <sighs> Victoria, why on earth are you knocking? Quick, quick, close the door. There's a salesman on our floor. Oh, that was close. Uh, am I interrupting some special train of thoughts? Oh, no, darling. Just rehearsing the lines for my play. Okay. Oh, right, sorry. Go ahead. Join me? Sure. Hello, dear. I am back. Am I interrupting some special train of thoughts? No. No, nothing special. I'm just trying to figure something out, or, or memorise something, or... I'm not sure, but it's very important. You know, I've been thinking, there is an art to writing... Yes, I'll tell you once I've figured it out, darling. <laughs> yes, Objects. there is an art to writing a play. Pasta or cordon bleu? I'll tell you once I've figured it out. It's too difficult a question. Yes, indeed. Of course, the key question here is how to build up suspense and maintain it all the way up to the climactic top. And, uh... Where were we? Passed out? What was the other thing? Nothing means anything. God, I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. This is wicked frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could test myself on, on Christmas carol knowledge. So I'll be prepared, or perhaps... Perhaps watch videos of myself performing. All you do is watch yourself. You're going to become a narcissist. And there's the art of creating at least two plausible characters. What do you do after checking your Facebook likes? Or, or after taking a shower, for that matter? Do you, uh, <laughs> do you take a nap, or, or does that just mess up your hair? Yes, I agree. It is a complete mess. Clean the bathroom? I've got to change my profile picture. <laughs> I think it's going to rain. Like, big time. Ugh. Chaos and creation, chaos and order, order and creation, rain, rain, go away, come again another day, I mean... Cloud, storm, pitter butter, lightning, oh, that's nice, I feel suspense there. You know, as Paul Valéry once wrote, the wind is rising, we must try to live. Look, I'm trying to figure out what direction those clouds are going in. As in, whether or not they're going to hit us. Is this the weekend? Oh, it rains here every day, it's the, um, the gull, gull stream. <laughs> is this the weekend? That's like asking, is that a cat or a dog? Anyway, have you figured it out about dinner? Oh, chef surprise. You know I like surprises. Pasta. <laughs> Don't open the door. Maybe it's a salesman on the floor. <laughs> I wish to be free for the highest good of all involved. No, no! No, I need. E. I wish to be free. For the highest good of all sentient beings. Mm. Humanity, yes, it rhymes. <laughs> I wish to be free. Free my mind. <laughs> to uplift all humanity. I will make the whole world happy, said the poet Saint Yamashwa. But, but, I don't know what's going to happen next. I'm going to die. There's a time lapse there. When, son of man? A banana? Set down after opening. A cut dandelion. Sun brown. Bananas and dandelions. A kind of denim. Are you there at all? Yes, yes, dear. I'm just trying to figure out what it means to be a playwright. My social responsibility. <laughs> oh, you're writing a play, I see. But surprise, mon dieu. You know, I knew you were a poetry star. Facebook phenom, a Twitter literati, was a playwright. Yes, I am not, but I have just begun. I've just finished writing the first few lines of my fine play. <laughs> oh, I see your kitchen monologues. I see. Yes, I know, I know, but, well, it still means something, right? In the bigger picture, a play is a vision within a dream. An abstract dream landscape made for meditation. A meditation play? <laughs> but what's it about, darling? What's it actually about? Well, it's about me, of course! <laughs> about the way my mind strolls, yet swings, it's absurd! Well, absurd, splendid. But something has to happen, right? Uh, and you mustn't forget to create uh, some plausible characters, or any character besides yourself, and plot, perhaps, and the like? Okay. Maybe it's about man versus his own crazy mind. <laughs> <laughs> Infernal poet. Internal drama! What a 
marked improvement. What an inferno. I'm so glad you like it. Time for a faux cafe. Not faux cafe, honey. The faux cafe. Straddle the Chester and the Sacré Coeur or stick your nose into the mould. Oh, it's so luminous when it's illuminated. <laughs> I think I look quite good in red. Uh, Martin, I've actually been writing my own play this entire time. Want to collaborate? Mm, yes, you can write your own character. How generous of you to let me into your play. What shall I do while I'm there? Sweep the floor and cook for you, I suppose. What century is this anyway? But don't I look good in red? I, I mean, what do you think? Be it. Well, I really don't know where this play is going. Oh. Look, I've only written four lines. You're acting like I've written a whole nine-scene play already. I am. Well, is it not going to be? Well, not now. Are you writing this down? Yes. Let's review it together. <clears throat> Martin, Victoria, why on earth are you knocking? Victoria, <laughs> quick, quick, close the door. There's a salesman on our floor. Martin, oh, that was close. <laughs> Victoria, am I interrupting some special train of thoughts? <coughs> <laughs> this is a draft, I suppose. These lines would have to be seriously rewritten and made a... funny. Spice them up? Well, we're placing these placeholder lines and somehow... somehow we'll have to find something that's... outside the window. <laughs> what do you want? want? No. What do you really want? I want to know which direction to sleep in. Horizontal or vertical on this very open minded bed. I mean, <laughs> north? East? What if I stuck my feet onto the sun by mistake? You're supposed to lie with your head towards it, right? Right? I believe it was Lao Tsung who once said, Can you be quiet enough to sit still and wait until the right answer arises by itself? Why does everything I say become a line in the play? Did you hear yourself rhyme? But stop! I don't want to anymore! <laughs> to rhyme or not to rhyme, it's been four days and we can't get out of our lines. It's a nightmare! It's called the highest art when art and life fuse into one single masterpiece. You can no longer tell what the matrix is. Even while I'm preparing dinner, I can feel the cold, critical stare of the audience hidden in the dark while I am illuminated, over-illuminated here on this <laughs> stage. Am I going insane? Well, I, on the other hand, quite enjoy this light. <laughs> and... <laughs> Dreadfully, this play is grievously not going anywhere. Well, welcome to my play, dear. Our play, indeed. <laughs> uh, let me tell you something. This play is going somewhere. I plan to submit it to a big and important theatre competition. The deadline is next Tuesday, 11.59pm. If our play is chosen, it will be performed in a boat on the Seine. <laughs> in Paris, France. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I was trying to live. Oh, Valerie. <clears throat> uh, hello in there. Uh, are you interested in learning about the world out there? Do you sometimes have a free <laughs> moment in your home? And in those moments, did you know that you can learn almost all there is to know about that world through these handsome encyclopedias? Hello. Hello. Uh, am I in there? I'm poet and dancer, double artist. My name is Martin Sixking. And I'm Victoria Crimson. I'm I'm almost a famous actress. <laughs> As it happens, I did only bring volume V with me today, but you wouldn't be listed under your first name. Uh, what, however, might you like to learn about the uh, fantastic cities on the slopes of Mount Vesuvius? <laughs> I'm sorry, we're, we're just not interested. Uh, but, uh, why is it that an encyclopedia salesman looks like such a very handsome actor? <laughs> <laughs> Handsome indeed. It's a lovely overcoat you've got on, by the way, and that confident posture of an actor, the tantalizing perfume, and. Thank you, you two, two charming people. I must admit, I find such uh, commentary to be as uh, articulate as it is, uh, as it is flattering. Uh, for, in fact, I am uh, by no means any uh, simple salesman. 
Anybody can see that. <laughs> because yes, underneath this dreadful money-making exterior of salesman, I am in fact a fine servant of the arts. I have written and produced several plays, some of which I've acted in. No famous films or anything, but I was once in a commercial for Fisherman's Friend Mints. <laughs> can I say something? No. I'm sad, is it right, Well, may I say that we are playwrights too. Well, fledgling. And we are at this very moment working on a play for a competition. Really? Mm -hmm. That's absolutely flabbergasting. <laughs> 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 I stumbled across the right place. And now we're all here together in the same room. And so you're working on a piece right now? Yes, we are! But we're not quite sure where the play is going. You must let me take a look at it. I might be in hell. Splendid! Uh, come, let's step out to Le Faux Café. Uh, Le Faux Café, qu'est-ce que c'est? Yes, let's take this corner <coughs> table. Darling spot, isn't it? With a closer view at the second door. Uh, Martin. Would <laughs> 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 you mind watching a nice chair from the kitchen? One without a cat on it or too much cat hair for that matter. <laughs> yes, we're dabbling in neo theatre of the absurd. <laughs> Magnifique, that's right up my alley. <laughs> this is really serendipitous. Are you writing now? Not uh, really. I'm, I'm in a, a kind of hiatus of nursing my creative powers. Is it because of the encyclopedias? Uh, yeah, per perhaps. I just, I just haven't birthed any brilliant ideas. You, you can join forces with us. Yes. Yes. What we really need is a smidge of objectivity and guidance. <laughs> I'm your man. You are looking at the solution to your problem. Oh, you're such a such a man of confidence. How fortuitous for all of us. And do you know something? You really could be a model. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's not something that I hear every day. But your um your play um what's it about? Uh, well, basically, it's about um a great poet and his wife. The two are <laughs> writing a play together about a similar couple writing a play together and. Well, they just keep going round in circles. Like, I'd jump out of my pants if you told us what you thought of it. <laughs> you needn't do that. Um, but I would be more than happy to offer a few words of uh, constructive criticism. Uh, so, your play, how does it begin? <clears throat> Victoria, why on earth are you knocking? Quick, quick, close the door. There's a salesman on our floor. <laughs> that was close. Am I interrupting some special train of thoughts? No, no. I'm just rehearsing the lines for my play. Your play? Oh, I am sorry. Go ahead. Join me. Sure. Hello, dear, I am back. I'm interrupting some special train of thoughts. No, nothing special. Just trying to figure something out. Or memorise something. I'm not sure, but it's very important. You know, I've been thinking, there is an art to writing. Yes, dear, I'll tell you once I've figured it out. Yes, there is an art to writing a play. Pasta or garden room. I'll tell you once I've figured it out. It's too difficult a question. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Two playwrights, debutantes. But uh, when does anything happen? I mean, I, I don't know if two characters can pull off an entire play like this. It's just, it's just talking. I quite agree. Yes, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> okay. okay, well, perhaps you could introduce some other characters. Uh, an artist, maybe. Someone who can relate to their plight and their struggle to wrestle a masterpiece out of the raw clay of their ideas. Uh, it could be, um, see, Barazal, as the French say, uh, a playwright who points him in the right direction. Uh, I could juice things up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> like you! <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I suppose you could say that, but uh, no, you could introduce an entire bevy of characters. I, Family, royalty, for God's sake. I, you know, I... Yeah, and then tons of heavy drama wouldn't see you. Sounds fierce. I see. Make it exciting! <laughs> yes, yes, and then you see through layers and layers of drama, I, then somehow they can, they all will die in the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, well, it's so original, but how could they do it? Oh, I know. I say something really contemporary, like lithium overdose, or or uh, an amateur heroin enthusiast out of control, or Hemingway type drinking oneself to death. <laughs> okay, that's 
the spirit that will slay the judges. But the question is, yeah, you I mentioned um, a competition. There's a. I'm glad you've asked. It's the Belleville Bacchus Play Festival. <laughs> 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 well, that okay. That changes everything. What's that? Oh no, it's just that's um I, that's a great event. Um, I would be more, I'd be more than happy to have it. You're so supportive. What a breath of fresh air. Yes, I'm really feeling my creative powers flowering. Thank you, Vincent. I hope you feel the same. And you know, as the Irish say, you're such a love. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I must actually, um, I have to be shuffling off to um, another encyclopedia gig. Um, <laughs> shall we sit around you? Yes, tomorrow, same time, same place. Tomorrow. Excellent. I do not. Cheerio! <laughs> to make some plum dumplings. Oh, I certainly hope they'll be pitted. Frequently I pit them, unless someone else can do it. I also have aspirations other than cooking, as you know. Vincent! <laughs> good evening, good evening. It's much nice to see you. Yeah, what a fine overcoat. What a fine bottle. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> but let's go out to the Faux Café. Ah, uh, yes, of course, to uh, your, uh, your corner table. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> shall we, uh, shall we get, put pens to paper or, um, yeah. Fingertips to touch screens. <laughs> Where are the cool tools? Well, I am getting a blast of inspiration from an unexpected source. Does anyone know what the stars uh, are saying today? I'm an atheist. And a surrealist, too. Yes, every time he talks, melting clocks come out of his mouth. <laughs> you know, Vincent, I don't know why or how, but, but I really feel that you get me. <clears throat> well, you know... As Rumi once said, the lions of God have one soul. You just take out that God part. Wow. Well, that's how I feel right now. Mm -hmm. Shall we just step right into the ring? Shall we? Okay. After carefully considering your play last night, I have to admit that I found it rather um, underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> There's no action. There's no plot. No suspense to speak of. I mean, and two rather flat characters. Um, I have to ask you, what the hell were you thinking with this play? Where's it going? <laughs> well, well, that is precisely our question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Two playwrights stuck in their own play is a fiasco. <laughs> You've really got a situation on your hands here. Well, <laughs> that's why we dig it. I mean, totally dig it to come across someone like you to help us, so to speak, get to the other side. <laughs> yes, after the motto, when two playwrights are drowning, the third might help. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Well, then why don't we start by um, naming some uh, characters? Start with uh, ancient sounding names like uh, Esto Macho, the Night Watchman. Right. Um, there's, a, you know, there's, a, there's a young lady who loses her wits, of course, um, Appassionata. You, know, you could even look to, uh, yes, you could even look to uh, Rilke's personal letters for the figure of uh, Benvenuto the Queen. Why? What's the king's name? Uh, that's a kind of question. No, there, there could be a usurped throne. Uh, and uh, perhaps someone related to the killed king, um, maybe uh, his, uh, his uh, brother, uh, Palacio. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wondered what that word means. Sounds, sounds ancient enough. <laughs> <laughs> what about injecting it with some fresh new medicine, yes. some new life? Like, uh, like Valium, perhaps. <laughs> right, I mean, I have a plethora of characters, but the key question I dare to pause, the art of creating suspense? Oh, no, that, that's a piece of cake. Yeah, take your, um, your poor sod, uh, Mr. Stomacho. You know, he hates his day job. Night watchman, janitor, salesman. <laughs> because, in fact, he is a playwright, but it's just not earning enough cash. Oh, and he wants that, uh, that, that, that pretty, pretty girl, Appassionata, but he can't have her. Uh, at first blush, it looks like he can. She is the daughter of a super-rich man, or, or a king, or... No, 
of a big theatre owner. <laughs> She's happily in love with another man, also happily rich. <laughs> mm, mm. Yes, okay, so yes, you have your two characters now, the lovers. And then, this is how you begin to create your suspense with Mr. Macho. He will plot the end of that love relationship. For his own motives, okay, uh, lust, money, some other intangible desire. You could bring a fourth character in to flesh out the dramatic schema, but oh, no, for the purposes of your competition, three should suffice, you need to economize. Wow! A whole three characters now! How mind expanding! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I started my play, I mean our play, just the one character. Me! <laughs> <laughs> when you have suspense, plot, and climax, follow like the cart following the ox. Yes, finally, suspense! And your image with the ox leads me to that ancient Buddhist analogy. <laughs> Where were we? <laughs> right, so, a couple in love, they're gorgeous, well-to-do, and they, they're engaged in the fine art of polishing their playwriting skills, working on their first piece ever for a Parisian theatre competition. Mm. <laughs> Third character distrusts them by his being Quite charming. Yes, I see what you mean. It's just it's just too handsome. Has a style, wears his nice overcoat, his tantalizing perfume, and who could resist? Yes, arms like those of a Greek god and Homer's brains. Well, he's meant to be rather charming. <laughs> And he offers to have them with their play, with the, the suspense perhaps and whatnot. They're using the ancient Greek invention of cunning. Try cunning as his weapon. Oh, and, um... Exactly. <laughs> okay, so, to summarize, we have your two characters, the playwrights, and then this third, somewhat crooked character who sets everything into motion by seducing one, or, um, or both of the characters. <laughs> yes! Yes, as he, uh, as he helps them with their play. Both characters! How inventive! How dazzling! Now, do you see? Do you see it now on the horizon? Do you see the suspense? And the plot? <laughs> and the climax, too? Yeah. Now you can write your play. You got it? Got it! Got it! Uh... <laughs> 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 Thanks a million! Thanks a whole bunch! <laughs> oh, what a pair of pure, pure fools. And I got them. I got them. <laughs> they actually think that they've written a play. A soap opera, maybe. Something fit for the dumpster. Um, now that I've dispensed my uh, golden advice on how to write a play, I'm off to submit my own fine play to be at the top of the heap at the Belleville Bacchus Play Festival. Uh. Woo!